from July 19th to 30th, within 11 days, the song Luoka Sea Market has been played more than 8 billion times worldwide, which is astonishing. After keeping a low profile for more than 10 years, the 52-year-old Chinese singer Dao Lang created a new miracle with this self-created song, which also brought a cultural shock to Chinese society. Sharp lyrics, ultra-cool melody, distinctive and mysterious hues, these qualities propelled Luoka C Market to rapid popularity as soon as it was released. Its magic lies in the fact that most people instantly recognize the author's immense talent and feel that the song echoes their pent-up frustrations and grievances, even though they may not fully comprehend the meaning behind each line of the lyrics. Some believe that Dao Lang, after a decade of refinement, directly targets the chaos in the Chinese music industry. Others think that his lyrics use historical references to criticize the current moral deficiencies in society. In any case, the satire and critical lessons imbued within Luoka C Market make it a thoroughly satisfying listen. This highly individualized song is based on the short story Luoka C Market from the famous ancient Chinese writer Pu Songling's Laozai Zhi. The story depicts an ethereal and elusive kingdom called Luoka Kingdom. It is a society where ugliness is embraced as beauty, where people judge others solely by their appearances, and where cognitive norms are reversed. In this realm, the more grotesque and peculiar one looks, the more beautiful they are considered, and the higher their social status, adorned with greater glory and wealth. The narrative revolves around a handsome young man who finds himself stranded in Luoka Kingdom due to a typhoon. However, he is mistaken for a monster by the locals. Subsequently, a series of intriguing events unfold in the story. The protagonist of the story was a young man named Maji. He was handsome, talented, and adept in singing and dancing. After his elderly father, Maji succeeded to the family's import and export business. Once, he went overseas for trading with others but was swept away by a hurricane. After drifting for several days and nights, he arrived at a place where everyone was exceptionally ugly. When they saw the handsome Maji, they mistook him for a monster and fled in alarm. Later, Maji entered a mountain village where there were villagers who looked like humans but were dressed in tattered clothes, resembling beggars. The villagers dared not approach him and only observed him from afar. As time went on, they realized that Maji was not a man-eating monster, and those who resembled humans gradually approached him. Maji asked them why they were so poor, and they replied, In our kingdom, looks matter more than talent or knowledge. Those who are the most beautiful become high officials, those slightly inferior become low officials, and even those who are less good-looking receive the favor of nobles, earning rewards to support their families. As for people like us, our parents thought we brought bad luck and often abandoned us right after birth. Led by the villagers, Maji arrived at the capital city of the Luasha kingdom. They saw a large sedan chair, and the villagers pointed and said, the person sitting here is the prime minister. Maji took a look and saw that the man had two ears growing backwards, three nostrils, and eyelashes that covered his eyes like curtains. Several mounted officials came by, and the villagers said they were government officials. Most of them were unkempt and grotesque in appearance. The lower the official position, the slightly better their looks. Later, as an outsider, Maji was introduced to the king by one of the officials. The king was delighted to meet him. However, some officials expressed concerns about Maji's peculiar appearance, fearing that it might startle the king. Consequently, the king had no choice but to give up on the meeting. The officials who introduced him advised Maji to disguise himself as ugly to seek fame and wealth. So, after undergoing a transformation to appear unattractive, Maji met the king. The king asked Maji about his methods for governing and securing the country, and Maji honestly and straightforwardly presented his ideas. The king highly praised him and hosted a banquet in his honor. As they drank merrily, the king said, I've heard you are skilled in singing elegant music. 
Could you perform for me? Maji then stood up and danced, imitating the movements of the Luoka dancers, wearing a white silk cloth around his head, and sang some sensuous melodies. The king was extremely pleased and immediately appointed him to an official position. He frequently invited Maji to join family banquets, showering him with special favor. Over time, many officials came to know that Maji's appearance was a disguise. Wherever he went, he would overhear people whispering and avoiding getting close to him. Maji felt isolated and uneasy, so he wrote a letter to the king requesting to resign from his position. Maji, carrying gold, silver, and jewels, returned to the original mountain village. He distributed money among his old friends. Some said, We, the humble ones, have received the generosity from your excellency. Tomorrow, we will go to the sea market to find precious treasures to repay your excellency. The next day, Maji followed them to the sea market, leaving behind the great Luoka kingdom. Through the sea market, Maji arrived at another place with customs vastly different from the Luoka kingdom, the dragon palace under the sea. Due to his exceptional talent, Maji gained the favor of the dragon king and married a dragon princess, giving birth to a son and a daughter. After three years, feeling homesick for his parents in China, with the help of the dragon princess, Maji returned to his hometown. In the Luoka kingdom, good people do not prosper, while bad people soar to success. This was precisely the revelation made by the author, Pu Song Ling, about the society he lived in. He believed that the society had become a place where beauty and ugliness were reversed, and the more wicked one was, the more popular they became. As a result, everyone had to put on false masks to please others, and human relationships and social norms became as cold and eerie as a ghostly world. As for Dao Lang's song Luoka Sea Market, who or what it satirizes has no definitive answer. This is because everyone has their own Luasha kingdom and dragon palace under the sea in their hearts. As the lyrics suggest at the end, with bad people in power, and right and wrong reversed, it is a fundamental issue of us humans. Thank you for watching.